before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. It's the time of the week again that we have our coffee chats with my friend Catherine Edwards over in the UK. We're on my channel this week. As you guys know, we alternate channels. How are you doing today, Catherine? I am really good today. I have had um, a, the most bizarre week um, and it's been good because lots of bits of the jigsaw puzzle have fallen into place. So I'm really good and I'm really happy to be here with everyone. I know it is, um, you know, when you stick with the truth, no matter how hard life gets, when you st stay in your integrity and you stick with what you believe is to be the truth and you're constantly trying to do the right thing, you do get vindicated over time and things do start to fall into place for you. And that kind of, I know Catherine off camera, we were talking about, you wanted to do some like episodes like of myth busting. So we can really look at some of these myths and some of this, what we're going to talk about today, which is probably classified as spiritual manipulation. And so before we get into the subject at hand, we are going to put a call out. If there is anybody out there who is transgendered, who is a man who transitioned to be a woman with all the surgeries, and you would, wouldn't would mind coming on camera with us and or with Catherine specifically and answering some questions that we have about the biology of all of this uh, for a particular reason. Um, email me or Catherine. Catherine, do you want to give your email address quickly? I'll put it in the description box too, but where they can contact you. Yeah, if absolutely. So my email address, spelt with a C, is Catherine Edwards Life 1717 at gmail.com and the reason we want to do this Bryce is because you and I are both real researchers so we promise it would be done with the utmost respect but sometimes it's really really important because there's so much misinformation out there we just want someone that's got real life experience of it that can talk us through in as much detail as they're happy to share you know what's really involved um, because it's really important for people to have this information Absolutely. And I, yeah, I want to reiterate that, Catherine. We, Catherine and I are safe people. I hate to use that word because I hate the whole safe space thing. But uh, we were talking off camera. I know I've made this very clear on my channel. I don't care if you're an adult, you do what makes you happy. As long mm -hmm. as you're not hurting anybody else, I support whatever makes you happy, especially here in the United States. In the Constitution, we're given the right to pursue happiness. And so whatever that means for you as a consenting adult, that's fine. I think our, our issue comes with when children are being groomed or being hurt. And that can happen from both a homosexual person and a heterosexual person. So it's all, so I want that, I want, if you are that person, don't worry. We don't, we're not judging you at all. We just want to clarify some things so that other people stop judging you, right? So that we have more, more of um, knowledge around what's involved when it comes to, to making this, this decision that I know a lot of people who are, genuinely transgender don't make lightly like i know that they, they don't make that lightly and so and that is that is a so so please yeah i'm esoteric atlanta gmail.com and i can forward it over to Catherine. you just feel free to reach out to us and we'll probably talk to you i guess talk to them for like, off camera first and then yeah, yeah. absolutely because it seems that it's important we're at a time now where enough of the real myth busting needs to go on so that people there's so much misinformation out there it's overwhelming for people so having some um topics and feel free to make other suggestions to us as well on some of the myths that have come up in this community over the last few years that you'd like us to cover on deep dives as well because that's what we love doing 
Yeah. And yeah, and it's that whole saying, two things get to be true, you guys. Yeah, we have a screwed up world. Yes, a lot of these conspiracy theories are founded in truth. Yes, yeah. we know that. But to the extreme that a lot of our quote unquote peers have taken it is not okay. And that's going to get into the topic that we we have today, which is spiritual manipulation. And it goes back to that research, doesn't it, Catherine? Like, you know, we get so mad at our friends and family who just sit around and watch the BBC or watch uh, Fox News or CNN, and they just take what the news anchor says as fact, and they, they repeat it, what they've said verbatim as fact. Well, the same thing is happening in our community, too, where people are replacing you know, Anderson Cooper with um, a YouTuber and they're still not doing their research and they're taking what what a YouTuber says is fact. And so there really has been no awakening. Right. It's just kind of a shifting. It's like rolling. It's like being asleep and rolling over from the right side to the left, right. side, the left side to the right side. Right. So we want to truly empower each and every person to know that research really isn't that hard, you guys. It's, it's, it's kind of fun sometimes, you know, I find it fun, you know, so, and just to kind of have that level of, of neutrality in a lot of things and equanimity and things and understand that you can't paint people black and white, that there's, there's a lot of shades of gray when it comes to humanity. So with that being said, let's talk about spiritual manipulation because I do feel like that's what's happening a lot within our own community. It's happening outside of our community within religious organizations. It's happening in, you know, these cults like scientology or nexium or the twin it's it's a manipulation of spirituality so i'm actually going to read the actual definition of spiritual manipulation yeah. which um it's using someone's religious or spiritual beliefs to manipulate or shame them forces the children to be raised in a faith that the other partner has not agreed to in some 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 incidents uses religious texts or beliefs to minimize or rationalize abusive behavior such as physical financial emotional or sexual um abuse or rape so is there anything you want to add to that definition catherine before we kind of ex expand upon that i think it's perfect really because i think you know for me this is such a big area and something that comes up a lot because the thing is the truth of the matter is is when you can see people have really done the inner work they're not judgmental and they are open to people having other belief systems and they don't try and shame people for that and ridicule for them so the laughable thing is really on how manipulated this word spiritual and spiritual practices has got recently is the fact that actually anyone who's doing any sort of shaming for someone else who's got a different opinion to themselves um is doing spiritual manipulation they're trying to manipulate using spiritual language like i've had it quite a few times this week with people trying to really argue their point about something that doesn't need to be argued about yeah. where they've basically been sort of saying um oh my video has gone funny has it gone funny for you oh yeah you're you're, you're you got you got in slow motion for a moment yeah, it's really weird. I don't know what's happened with that. I'll keep talking and apologize for my video, but how weird that it's gone weird whilst we're doing this. Because it's like I'm just gonna say, talk about spirituality. If there are any entities that are messing with our Zoom that are shouldn't be here, you got to go. We don't give you consent. You gotta go. I'm calling in all of our protectors to remove any entities that do because we are we're dangerous, Catherine. I well, it's really weird, Bryce, because I've just been on two back-to-back -back Zooms and I've not had this happen at all. And then as soon as I started about that, I could see my whole screen went funny. Yeah. Into we are dangerous to the bad guys because they don't. And, and I see that. I see our shadow banning. Sometimes I laugh at how shadow banned we are. And I'm like, obviously, Catherine and I are saying something really true or we wouldn't be the shadow banned, right? We wouldn't be this smeared, you know? So, um, and that's part of that spiritual manipulation. And so um, we're just going to keep pushing forward because obviously, Obviously, you know, I, I'll say in, 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 in a laughable way, all the shadow banning, all that kind of stuff, that's just giving me ammunition to keep going forward because I know I'm there's some truth that's that needs to come out. And and so we'll we're just gonna keep speaking. You can't you can't put tape over our mouth. We're gonna keep speaking. So anyway, go ahead, Catherine. You've stopped now. Yeah, no, I think it's happened so, so much to people, and I find it really sad because it's just as people are starting to open themselves up and really look at life in a different way. There's this manipulation that's shutting them down and shaming them for having a different opinion. And it's really, really sad because when you look at true spiritual leaders or people that have really done the work, 
they don't treat people like that again it comes back to one of the things that we've sort of said all the way along is actions do speak louder than words so you can be saying certain things and spell casting with the words you're saying to try and manipulate people into having the same opinion as you or to try and cover up your mistake. We see it the whole time. We see it the whole time on the political arena, where often one political opponent will actually blame the other side for doing what they've done, because it's the greatest way to actually distract from what you're yeah. doing is actually yeah. to get someone to look over there. But when this happens in the spiritual community, it can be so, so damaging for people, because just as they're starting to tap in to their intuition, trust their thoughts, and I do think it's part of human nature where, you know, we're social beings, although I'm becoming less so, <laughs> far happier in my herd of animals, because we are sp we are social beings. And so we do want to belong to our tribe. And then to do that, we need to sort of fit in with certain norms and behaviours. But this this attitude of not being allowed to question things, of any sort of ostracising for someone that is politely expressing a different view. We're not talking about abuse. We're not talking about when you're really abusing someone. And that's completely different. But I think understanding that this spiritual manipulation is really real and it's really, really rife on social media is absolutely crucial to each and every one of us taking our power back and starting to really go within and understand that actually, if we've got that feeling and it's not quite right, um, we should be happy to express that. And if you're in an environment where you can't politely express it, then there's something terribly wrong. Oh, yeah. And that's that's the bite model, right? That's information control. So anytime, you know, if you and, and I agree with you, if people don't agree with me on my channel and they're polite about it and, and, and give their argument, I, I don't mind that at all. When people yeah. are abusive and name calling and are and are are narcissistic, that's when the the that's when you have put a boundary up. But um, but you know, I saw I've seen this with uh, you know the the Telegram cult that has been harassing me, big time. Where there are I've given the police numbers that the police are involved. I I was um there was a person in this you know because they're trying to sell this story that mm -hmm. Melania Trump, for example, is a Romanov from the um. Anastasia's story, you know, for those who don't know who the Romanovs are, and the horrific ending that they had, regardless of if you believe they were good people or bad people, those children did not deserve to, to die that way. Um, but anyway, this uh, Russian person uh, went in and actually did deep research into the Romanovs and looked at all these different files of the forensic reports of the body because the bodies have been found you know we do have the remains of the romanovs um so we do know that there is no missing person that they all unfortunately lost their lives that night when um when they were uh, executed um and she presented that to this group chat because they're trying to sell people that melania trump is a romanov and she's like no she's not and this is my research backing that she's not and she got kicked out of that group because she didn't conform to the narrative that they're trying to sell. And that is another form of spiritual manipulation, you know, and, and bringing people into a fantasy world as, as uh, general Flynn's son, I'm going to just quote him, the science fiction fantasy world that people are living in through the derangement and that, and that, you know, spiritual manipulation can happen in all sorts of degrees and, and levels of, of harm. And for me, it's concerning because we all studied the Trojan horse growing up, you know, where they put the enemy inside the horse and they push the horse in as a gift and the enemy snuck out at night. So that's like a controlled opposition. So what's happening with a lot of the spiritual manipulation is that these, these YouTubers, some of them are just going monkey see monkey do they're just doing repeating what other people have said and leading people down a wrong path but they're not doing it intentionally but some of them are doing it intentionally and they're putting false information out there they're spiritually ma manipul manipulating you they're spiritually getting you into this junk conspiracy cul-de-sac and if you question them you're kicked out of the group and so yeah. you don't question them and so you keep get, keep getting more and more and more indoctrinated into this false belief and distractions while the real stuff is happening over here you mm -hmm. know we see that with the nasara that people are being spiritually manipulated that don't worry guys it's all a show it's all a show is a spiritual manipulation it's not a show it's our lives and people are starving now and we're in a recession and gas is through the roof this is very real but they're manipulating you spiritually to trust the plan to trust the plan so that you don't stand up for yourself 
so that you don't take action in your community to write this to course correct so that the new world order can walk in right through the front door. So that's why this is really important, you guys. It's not just the mental aspect and the mental health, which is, which is very important. It's also the global issue that we're having. Another example, I told Catherine that I would say this example. So in, the, in any world, a cult can form in any community. It doesn't matter what it is. And we do see cults forming in the yoga world. And I have to give a lot of props to all of my teachers that I have had because they've been very good at putting up boundaries and not and being very hands off in a lot of ways and not coercing control over people. Well, this one person I knew in the Ashtanga world um, wrote a book about his issues with drug addiction and his uh, path to sobriety and using the practice. And I already had some questions in my gut around this person. Like there were some things that he had said and did that I didn't think, I mean, I've never been through rehab. I've never done, I've never been an addict, but I have friends who have been. And I just like, that doesn't sound like things he would say didn't sound right. But I was reading his book and there was a section where he spoke about that his track marks from heroin on his arm, his track marks, um, the scars disappeared because of the practice. And I threw the book down when I read that. And I said, I actually said that's spiritual manipulation because star scars don't disappear when you practice yoga. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen. I have scars. I know people, I have scar, a scar going across my stomach from when I had my appendix out when I was 12. I have scars on my hand from my hand got slammed in a door. I've got a scar on my ear from ear surgery. I had, I have a scar on my back from back surgery. And these are all scars that I collected innocently. Like at no fault, they were just health issues. And so you would think if the practice was going to remove scars, that they would remove scars from people who were developed these scars in childhood from an operation. You know, you get what I'm saying? Mm. So, but then that leads to this idea that we get into this idea of profits too, because uh, profits are spiritual manipulation as well. That somebody in the community has more of an ear to God than you do and therefore they have in, in, entitlement and they have special privileges and this person is saying in the yoga world i have a special place within the yoga world because this practice i did something right in this practice and it got rid of my scars well i went and actually talked to an ex i actually called up a rehabilitation center and talked to and this was long before i was on youtube and actually asked someone who works there who specializes in heroin addiction and i asked about track marks and he was like he said to me, he said, sometimes they will go away over a long period of time, like decades, they'll start to fade. But no, typically they will not go away. Once the scars are there, if the person is doing it that much, there's always going to be some type of marking to indicate you're, you're, there's always going to be kind of be a scar there. And so that kind of sealed it in my head. I was like, all right, this guy doesn't have scars. He's obviously lying about his past in order to create a bigger story for himself. And now he's manipulating people to make himself somehow special and then have people fall in line with what he, what he teaches versus what somebody else teaches, if that makes sense. And so if you take that story, that's an extreme uh, example, but we see that again, we see that in the, in our world, we see that with people claiming to be the long lost niece of, of Tesla and claiming to telepathically talk to Trump. And they're bringing people down a very dark and dangerous path where um, if you don't save yourself from that and, and get yourself out of that, I, I don't know, you know, there's no telling where that path is going to lead. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, and I think the thing is, this will happen to all of us at some stage in our life. Um, apologies about my camera going weird. It just keeps doing it. But it will happen to all of us. And the whole point to me about the lesson is life is that you recognize it and you course correct and you have the strength to step away from that situation. One of the other ways of spiritual manipulation I see a lot is keeping people. So we are now just about to hit 2024 within a month. And we've been going at this since 2020 most of us now a lot of people are a lot younger but a lot longer but let's say you know since all the shit hit the fan we've been going since then and we've still got the same thing saying this is going to happen here this is going to be a big month this is going to happen i'm not saying they're not but one of the first sort of main rules of spiritual practice is if you're in the vibration or the energy that something's always going to happen in the future you don't bring it into realization. So if you're manifesting people who've studied this and have real success for it, or any of the energy healing or people in Joe Dispenza's work, doesn't matter whichever one resonates with you. It's all about getting into the present moment and having that feeling as if it's already here. 
So if these people are really that spiritual and really believe in that, why are they not helping people to get into that? Because I do absolutely believe in, in collective um, manifestation. You know, there's so many studies that have been shown by people like Limit Taggart and loads of other people where when you do group meditations, you can shift the crime rate, you can shift the healing, you can shift the energy. And what these people are doing is they're actually bringing people into there and now to do something really constructive with that knowledge, not to think about how they can be rich from getting their dongs or dings or whatever else, um, you know, which are meant for the people in those countries. Now we all, there's a lot of people that are really suffering financially, and that's really tough. But anyone who's encouraging you to say next month, next month, next month, they're throwing your life away. They're encouraging you to throw your life away. Whereas most real spiritual teachings in my book are the people that are saying, be at peace now yeah. and then it will come. If you're waiting for something outside of you to change for that spiritual peace, there's something inherently wrong. If we're waiting for people to be arrested, if we're waiting for a new president, if we're waiting for a miraculous healing. Now, there's a lot of people that are suffering health-wise and have got loved ones, whether they're humans or animals, suffering health-wise. It's horrendous, absolutely horrendous to be in that situation. But there's loads of people offering solutions that you could do now, not when this comes, you'll be all right. Because for some people, that's just going to be too late. Yeah. And a lot of the spiritual, true spiritual teachings teach you that you're the person that, that actually controls everything. And so your health is under your control. Your finances are under your control. And nothing outside of yourself is even really real. It's all part of Maya, which is a Sanskrit word for like illusion, right? The illusionary world. And um, we were talking offline, Catherine, I was like, you know, we see and I see this hardcore in sp spiritual manipulation, hardcore in the spiritual world. And it's because a lot of people don't know the foundations of spirituality. And that's why they're getting suckered into these ego based, which is illusionary based solutions that feed the narcissism, feed the ego versus actually giving you, you know, true spirituality is not unicorns and rainbows. It's tough love sometimes. And it's you having to break through your obstacles and your own limitations a thought by the mind and that's why you know it's so interesting Catherine it's like you know we see that we had so many people of our awesome subscribers that participated in our shadow work challenges that we've done twice now and we put a lot of work into that to, for you guys and for the people who are actually doing that because we have a private signal group and they are actually shifting their lives they are yeah. actually I, I, I I'm not in that group that often but when I pop in it's, it's amazing to see them actually because they took the first step and that first step was accountability that you are responsible for you. Trump isn't going to save you, right? No med bed is going to save you. Actually, Cliff High just released a whole article or uh, email, something. My, my boyfriend read it about how he explained in detail how the med beds aren't even possible, right? And so if you're not even questioning, if you're not even reading all, if you believe in the med bed, but you're not willing to just read information from a voice of dissent, that challenges your own thoughts, then that's not critically thinking because critically thinking is actually challenging your own perceptions more than anything. Right. And so I wanted to actually, uh, and it's interesting with the whole Nassari thing before I go to this website quickly. Um, yeah. How funny is it that they're having people, Catherine, like sit around, not do anything to better themselves financially, not pay their taxes, not pay their mortgages. And now we have people who are being foreclosed on and we have people who the government are coming and taking their land. So isn't that interesting? Like, You've believed this lie and now you're owning nothing and being happy. Remember what I said about the Trojan horse? Yeah. What do the, do the controllers want? They want you to own nothing and be happy. Well, it seems like a lot of people in the quote unquote truth of world are still asleep because now they are owning nothing and being happy. They're, they took the bait. They took the bait of escapism. They, and that's what spiritual manipulation is as well. It's escapism. It's 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 believing that that somebody is going to do it for you and that you don't have to do the hard work yourself. But there's a joy and there's a beauty in doing the hard. That's why I keep saying it's a privilege to save yourself because so much. It's like polishing silver, right? When you actually get there and get the grit and you polish it yourself, there's a there's a lesson that's there there's wisdom that is gained and let me just quickly i've shared this before and this is from a christian website and i'm not you guys know i'm not a fan i think the christian church 
is a very abusive um, cult. But with that being said, I think what this person has written here is actually pretty good when it comes to signs of spiritual abuse. So I'm just going to, I'm going to put this website in the description box below so you guys can, can read this and just replace like Jesus or the church with anything else. Replace Jesus with the truth or community or Jesus with, you know, the yoga class you're going, whatever it is where you feel like you might be manipulated. You can interchange the noun, right? So one, the first one, spiritual, spiritual abuse leaders twist the truth to make themselves look better. And you end up questioning if you heard them correctly or were misinterpreting something. That's also called gaslighting, right? Mm -hmm. Spiritually abusive leaders demand respect instead of earning it. Spiritually abusive leaders betray your confidence and share your information with others. We've seen that happen in the truth of the world where people will get doxxed their private information. Well, I've been doxxed by other truthers. And that's actually a federal, in the United States, that's a federal law. You cannot dox somebody. The people who dox me were not in the United States. But um, but yeah, that's that's called doxing. Spiritually abusive letters say you need to give up your free time for Jesus or for the truther community or for Telegram, whatever it is, and shame you if you don't agree. Spiritually abusive leaders don't allow themselves to be held accountable or corrected and bully anyone who disagrees. Catherine and I, we've questioned things and gotten majorly bullied for it. Um, and I want to go back to this for a second. Second. you know spiritually abusive leaders say you need to give up your free time for enter whatever it is here scientology whatever um and shame you if you don't agree that's why i think we see so many people spending hours and hours and hours and hours of their day on telegram yeah they feel like they need they, they feel like they need to be engaged spiritually abusive leaders avoid your request for conflict re resolution but are quick to confront you if you try to bring up things they are twisting you are seen as unteachable and blame shifting Catherine. You and I off camera have majorly dealt with this, haven't we? As I'm reading this, I'm like, yeah, we dealt with this right. off camera together. You and I in the same situation, we had to deal with this, didn't we? And it's absolutely hysterical because I have got, as have you, all the evidence. Yeah, in right, even when people try and delete things off my phone, I have backups. Um, and um, it is hysterical because I'm not going to put it out there because I'm not going to talk somewhere else. And I 100% believe that, you know, energy uh, uh, goes where energy flows, where attention goes. So I'm putting all my attention to elsewhere. But trust me, if needs be, I will bring them out yeah. because so much. The thing is the manipulation of other people, the lack of truth. And there's something so wonderful if we want to shift the energy of where we've been in about admitting your mistakes and saying sorry and we're not seeing that and therefore no wonder the world's in the shit show it is quite frankly um but yeah it, it is hysterical and other people jumping in to try and um you know back up things because they're so invested in supporting a certain person that they won't hear anything against it when they know have got no idea of the facts and have not no interest in finding out the facts it's it's yeah. really fascinating to see and unfortunately it's uh, very sad that people are manipulated like that oh yeah you and i we realized that a mutual person was like telling us both different things and we had the text messages to read to each other to prove that we had been told different things and then another person involved we were all trying to talk and that person got told another thing that then just ceased all communication by the same puppet master by the same puppet master was and the reason why there has to be a complete block of communication is because if we do have the evidence, I have the text messages, you have the text messages, we know the truth. I mean, I pulled up my file, I have a whole file of the evidence and I've, you know, for one case, there is a detective here in the United States that is working on the case actively at the moment. And for another case, I've, ex I've submitted everything to the FBI because it's out of the country and they have everything. And so it's, it's, but this is huge. This is huge. Spiritually, I'm going to read it again. Spiritually abusive leaders avoid av avoid your request for conf conflict resolution, but are quick to confront you. If you try to bring things up, they are twisting you as you are seen as unteachable or blame shifting. Catherine, we got blamed for everything, for right? everything. When really, this, did is was so, this is why it's so wonderful to see the interviews that you've done with people like Doug and things and that we've both done with other, you know, with Kelly and claire etc because the thing is when people come out of these situations and they start to recognize it and i don't think there's a single one of us that won't have experienced this to some degree in our lives i really don't i've never met anyone that hasn't but the thing is it's again letting go of the shame of realizing that you've been spiritually manipulated and starting to take your power back and trusting yourself because the trouble is 
it's like the emperor's new clothes price where everyone's scared to be the person that says but hang on a minute you actually not wearing any clothes and the thing is is because that's because people have been constantly disempowered 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 and again it's not about shaming even the person that's doing it that's not the purpose this isn't about getting back at people it's no. realizing that we cannot shift the energy of the world we're in whilst we're keep being being engaging in this sort of negative energy cycle that's keeping us in this low vibe place because actually we don't want to actually step away and sort of say actually yeah i have been through that i mean we all have we we've all been have. Do. we've all um, been do. and we all yeah. will be again i'm sure but the great thing is is just being open enough to say that at least you're trying at least you're open you're learning you're you're not going to be the person that shuts off that stuff i've had people come to me in the past that they've told me things and i've shut it off and sort of okay spiritual manipulation you're just gossiping well there's a big difference between how energy is shared with you yeah do you actually i had a uh an instant recently where people were trying to tell me stuff about certain people and i'm like look i'm open but have you actually got something constructive or is right. this just gossip because there's a big difference have you got some evidence to show me or are you just gossiping about this person yeah. or if it's your intuition be honest about your intuition but don't try on this particular example they were trying to like make up examples to back up their case that didn't exist because yeah. when i go for the evidence so it's absolutely fine to say look it's just my intuition as well but be honest about where you're getting your information from right right and that's um you know that's i will say like as much as the shit that you and i have taken catherine at least i can sleep at night because i've always told the truth with this i've stuck i would never you know and that's what's so shocking because i think that's the thing too like when you would never lie about something when you would never intentionally hurt somebody else or lie to somebody and manipulate text somebody one thing and text somebody else the other thing you know, obviously that's a very puppeted assault, a very puppeted um, chess game that's being played with people. I would never do that to somebody. Um, and and I think when you know you would never do that, you just assume other people would never do that either. But I can go to sleep at night knowing that I have told the truth and I have stood in my integrity and had tried to like have reasonable conversations with people and share the evidence and show the evidence of what I'm talking about. But of course, when you've got someone who's an abuser, they're going to cut that off right and so so yeah all right so number seven spiritually abusive leaders will make you feel you can't change groups whatever or you'll miss what god god has for you we see that in the tesla um or in the the telegram cult that's led led by the quote unquote tesla where she basically is creating what's called um what the the chinese use which is the social credit system where she's like if you don't agree with me or you don't if i don't like you then you're not going to get your nasara that's a social credit system guys and that's what this is like you're going to miss what god has in store unless you unless you uh, comply completely to what the leader wants um spiritually abusive leaders demand their way over your free will and scare you with threats to your reputation if you don't comply or shame you by bringing up past failures well i've already had the worst thrown at me and i'm still here guys so i know that sucks when that happens you know the scientologists deal with this they call it fair gaming in scientology but listen if i can if i can have what's been thrown at me from these groups and i can still be here and doing videos and happy with my life then so can you and if you if this is what's if this is what's pulling if this is what's stopping you from leaving whatever group you're in i'm just going to tell you right now feel free to e email me at esotericatlanta at gmail.com i will be your support i will help you um process this if this happens to you so you don't have to go through it alone because it is very um it does create ptsd it does create trauma but um in some incidents like my incidents you will get the police involved and you can get legal protection so just so you guys know that all right spiritually uh, can i just add to that as yeah. well is it's yeah. a real thing that i've seen happen a lot and the thing is if you get to my age there's not a single one amongst us that hasn't got something in their past that they wouldn't want bought up it's okay to make mistakes it's yeah. okay to learn from them it's okay to grow you're not meant to be the same person in your mid-50s that you were as a teenager you learn through going through life it's this if someone's going to bring that up and threaten and blackmail you and shame you for it they're not a friend when you get to the stage where you can own it and say i've seen the most amazing interviews with people there they've owned it and say yeah 
I, I was a knob at that stage. I did do this and I'm sorry and I've learned from it. And my ego, we, you know, it, we are all human. Our, our egos will get in the way. Our greed will get in the way. It, it's, it's okay to cock up don't let people hold that against you please don't because it will eat away and this is how things like cancer start absolutely and i will say that too on the flip of that as well if you have been someone that's acted as like a flying monkey for a narcissist but you didn't know that at the time because you were spiritually manipulated as well as someone like myself who has gone through a lot of narcissistic abuse um if you are too ashamed to like apologize or come talk to me don't be I don't, you know, for any, and I think most people who've been through spiritual manipulation um, who have come out the other side don't necessarily hold it against you. Like when you wake up and realize that you were used and abused as well. Um, so don't be afraid to um, to address that with somebody. If you're sitting, God, I was totally duped by this person. And I feel bad because I said nasty things about an innocent person or I did nasty things to this innocent person. I really want to apologize, but I'm ashamed. Don't you know, don't be ashamed. Like it's just reach out to that person. Now there are some, some cases where you, you do have scorched earth, but in most situations, just apologizing to somebody will mean the world to that person that, you know, so anyway, that I like and that you brought that move on as well, because you've basically at an energetic level cleared and really shown by your actions that you have learned and moved on from it. And I just, it's so, so valuable because we've all got situations where we need to Absolutely. do that. Absolutely. And yeah. most people are pretty understanding. And most people, especially if you're genuinely sorry, and, and I would say like, you know, either email the person or text the person, try to meet them face to face if you can just to just just to say you're sorry. And I promise you, it will make you feel better. It will make that other person feel better. And even if there's no friendship or communication after mm -hmm. that, depending on how severe the situation is, um, it will lo load in your weight and their weight. Um, and it will bring that person that you want to apologize to validation as well. And that will make a lot of difference in their energetic psyche as well. So yeah. So spiritually abusive leaders demand to be served instead of serve. Spiritually abusive letters silence their credits by making them the bad guy, which kind of goes back to what we were saying. That's projection. Spiritually abusive leaders don't give your you credit for your ideas and successes, but take that credit for themselves. You know what's happening? I don't know if I told you this, Catherine, because there's always so much going on. There are three Three people, three quote unquote content creators out there who have smeared me like crazy and they will take my videos and then they will verbatim copy my research and put it on their channel. And people have been sending it to me and I don't, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it, but the good news is, is these people don't get like, get like 50 views. So it's not that big of a deal, but it's still, it's just comical because they and that goes back to the organic portal thing that organic portals or dark dark people can't create because darkness can't create they can only steal from the light so they're projecting onto the light calling the light the bad guy when, when they're the bad guy and then they're stealing the work of the light and presenting it i mean one person catherine i'll have to send you this i won't say her name off on camera but i'll have to send you this person literally covered one of my biggest cases where I got one of the biggest views with a year ago, which was the orphan strike, the uh, child strike of 1899 and the train, the orphan trains and literally took all of my research and made a video claiming it as her own. And I was like, uh, it is unbelievable. And again, there's nothing wrong. Part of, a good researcher will always quote their sources yeah, and give them I do. to you because so many ideas are not novel and you can see something that can trigger something and it's like thank you so it's like this is what is learning about we see children learn this hopefully as they're growing up less so now because they're not allowed to learn a lot of this stuff now but you know as adults we never look to you know old to learn and you know sometimes it's just so important just to be authentic because you're carrying that with you. It's like they say, if you can't forgive someone, you are carrying that burden with you and it will manifest in one way or another negatively for you. So, you know, regardless of what it means for the other people, you owe it to yourself to just be honest with yourself. If you cannot be honest with yourself, you cannot be honest about anyone else. Absolutely. With anyone else. And you're right, Catherine, when I when I do, I try to credit people when I find research uh, from other another person that I really like and agree with. And it, that's great because then you can expand upon it yourself and look yeah. at your research. But when people are just verbatimly copying you word for word like a script and I was told by somebody that this particular person used to like 
get notifications for my videos and then would go into the room and like write down what I was saying you know and that and then taking credit for them themselves when it's not their work it's my work it's plagiarism so you know that is huge that is huge spiritually abusive leaders bully shame or tease you into breaking your communicative boundaries so they you know they 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 don't allow you we actually get that from 99 percent of our subscribers Catherine, are amazing awesome people like i love 99 percent of the people who watch us i consider them friends but that one person of people we get our boundaries as youtubers get crossed all the time from from these bullies on these trolls on the internet so yeah spiritually abusive leaders dismiss you when you no longer serve their need right oh, yeah. guard two friends don't dismiss you like Catherine, we met on youtube we've been filming together now for like what four years or something and i feel like yeah. a friend of mine like i feel we've been through Catherine and i've been through hell and back together off camera so i feel like we are we are bound we are we are bonded for life we, we we went through our friendship is strong now but you know when you are with somebody who is like a narcissist this is even in a personal relationship like when you are dating a narcissist when you don't serve their purpose anymore that you they then they go through the discard phase where they discard you so um and true friends don't do that to you like true I'm friends never, you've never done Bryce in our friendship and you know recognize with others we've never tried to change each other as well and we've never no. needed to agree with each other all the time so there's a big difference to that you know there really is a big difference it's like this is where society's gone so wrong now that people you know you're not meant to be clones of each other right. we're all unique we're all different we're all going through different experiences at different things and that's absolutely fine and i think you know a lot of people have been really abused um spiritually by not being allowed to be themselves not being allowed to go through things not being allowed to have a different opinion yeah oh absolutely and that's that's you're totally right i don't know anybody who has the exact same viewpoint as anybody else, even your partner, and you are not going to agree on every single thing, right? So absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's see, a spiritually abusive leaders accuse you of stealing their message when you grow beyond them. Yep. Spiritually abusive leaders gaslight you into thinking you're crazy. That goes back to the first, right? Mm -hmm. Spiritually abusive leaders can't admit fault, but use the knowledges of others' fault to cause fear and intimidation. 1,000%, 1,000%. Spiritually abusive leaders have their minions do their dirty work and isolate, intimidate, or manipulate those who don't comply. That's called flying monkeys. I was just referring back to that. They do that all the time because narcissists typically are very lazy. So they, they have to form a cult or something like that to get people like my situation with the EIE cult um in, in my police reports I have multiple screenshots and met from other people claiming to dog nap my dog claiming to to hurt me um physically um and that's because they're doing the bidding of the leader of that particular cult right spiritually abusive leaders surround themselves with the elite and don't act interact with the sheep oh my god Catherine are we seeing this in the truth or world or are we Absolutely. seeing this there are truthers on youtube that think they're literally brad pitt and like i'm like i'm i'm a freaking i mean i'm filming in my bedroom right like, you know, like i'm just a person you know um right okay spiritually abusive leaders use their charisma to create cult like following that would defend them if, when they are questions again that goes back to that flying monkey thing and yep narcissists are very charism uh, charismatic spiritually abusive leaders create a culture of popular inner circle if someone raises a concern they are put out of the clique and uh, and the other inner circle people are afraid to speak up again that goes to the act the emperor has no clothes right mm. spiritually abusive leaders surround themselves with only with people who praise them fear them or submit to them spiritually abusive leaders convince people they can't under that they can't understand the deeper things of god and need their help this is big guys this goes back to the whole prophet thing we see this a lot with like all sorts of divination all across the internet and all communities where people are using divination as a form to uh to have people conform to their opinion right they use that their ability to to do whatever craft they know how to do to try to manipulate people into believing their lies right because they somehow know how to get information that you don't well anybody can learn how to divinate in my opinion friends we're all prophets we all can get messages from god but the message that god sends me might not apply to you so therefore maybe i shouldn't say anything to you because it's none of my business what your relationship with god is and this is also using what i call using god as a weapon using divinity yeah. as a weapon and that's not cool that is not cool at all 
Spiritually abusive leaders don't help you overcome your sin in your life, but discard you and make you, you look like you are a bad a bad leader. I'm not going to say sin here. I'm going to say maybe places where you're working, your work. They discard the work you're doing in your life and they make you look bad because you are admittedly struggling with things like anger or betray, you know, these, these wounds that we all work on and they'll use that against you, right? Spiritually abusive leaders in churches, th- those who bring, uh, bring up legitimate issues as enemies, those who were once friends or allies swiftly become enemies once a concern is raised. Sometimes these folks are banished, told to be silent or shamed into submission. So this happened to us, Catherine, like we have legitimate concerns and, and evidence of these concerns, like legitimate issues for somebody that used to be a friend of ours that could have gotten this person into legal trouble that could have been really bad. And we had legitimate concerns and, and proof and we were dismissed and now we are an enemy, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to be so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because at least I don't have to deal with the FBI. At least I'm not on the opposing end of the FBI at this point. Spiritually abusive leaders lie without a conscience. They use their platform as worth protecting for the sake of the gospel or let's say the sake of the truth or community or the sake of whatever it is that they are peddling. Um, and so again, I'm going to put this, uh, it is uh, once again, just to reiterate guys, this is a Christian website. I do not believe that the church is any better than any other organization, but I do think there's some really good points here to look at is like the bite model. That's a really important point as well, because this is what I love is, is when you're really open to learning information, we've discussed this a lot. And I know we both discussed it with Shanti on Aquarius Rising and Mornay is, is, as shanti says you know the man can fall but the message remains pure and the thing is is we can't someone's put that in there and that's a brilliantly put together list that will help so many people for thank you so much for finding that and sharing it i've not found anything that good before and you don't need to agree with every single thing on that website to realize that's really good information that can help you and i think when we get out we've spoken so many times about getting out this black and white thinking take what resonates for you what you need right now and just leave the rest and don't worry about it absolutely and that's a really good point like it's like the bite model i love mm. dr stephen hassan's bite model but i don't die, die like dr stephen hassan hassan however you say his last name because he himself i believe he himself is in another cult now and yeah. uh, doug and i doug from days but not confused and i have spoken about that because he he uh, agrees with me on that but he also likes the bot mo- bite model um mm-hmm. so, you know so you can, you don't you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. you can take what's good but recognize that the human being is human beings are fallible right but but some of this information is very valuable and so yeah so i guess the moral of the story is first of all i hopefully this is enlightening for people and hopefully it opens up another area of awareness for where you can be manipulated And I just want to reiterate, and this is just my opinion, you guys, but from my opinion, God, higher consciousness, whatever vocabulary word you want to give the supreme consciousness is nothing but light, mercy, and grace. There's nothing you can do that is going to take that, that privilege away from you to have that relationship with the divine. And people though will come in and try to manipulate that and use that as a weapon. And so I just, I want everybody listening to know there is no human being on this earth that can dictate what your future looks like or, or the, or the condition of your soul, right? That, so I just want to to clarify that. And if you are feel like, if you feel like somebody is doing that to you, whether it is through a church, whether it is through another type of cult, like, um, like a Nexium or a Scientology, or whether it's someone in the truther community or whether it's someone who's divinating, understand that good people who are in these positions of like authority in these like spiritual organizations are always going to honor the fact that you, as, as far as God is concerned, you are equal to them. You know, if you're a divinator, the only difference is, is that you've studied how to divinate. That's it. Yeah. The client's opinion is also extremely valuable, especially if the question is regarding their life. And there are really good people out there for every bad person out there who's spiritually manipulating. There is a good person that will be honest with you and integral with their work with you. If that makes sense. Same with yoga. Same with, I'm sure, in the holistic healing, Catherine, there's a lot of people with God complexes. And people can go through stages as well. So, you know, you can be really on uh, uh, in aligned and then you can go through an ego or greed stage and go off the tracks. But a lot of those people then come back again as yeah. well because they've learned different lessons in that process. And 
I think recognizing this, I think is so, so helpful for people because it's really, really hard for people to discern, particularly since a lot of the people that will watch this and that we resonate with haven't necessarily got people in their immediate families that they can discuss these type of things with. So therefore taking a look at it and feeling it's okay to sort of start questioning things. It's not just okay. It's absolutely essential. Okay. Um, is just perfect for you and it will really help relieve that burden because deep down we're carrying it and we know it's just how how much we're willing to bring it to the surface and admit it and when we feel strong enough to deal with it as well and that is another point too they uh, in the yoga world i will speak from the yoga world specifically there are a lot of teachers and people that will kind of make their uh, their whole circle in their life just yoga people like their friends they'll date within the yoga world that, you know, and so they kind of isolate themselves. And I always encourage our students not to do that, to maintain your friendships with people who don't practice yoga, to maintain your friendships with people who are not specifically in your line of, of, of discipline, because that's going to help you stay grounded and help you not to be manipulated by a bad teacher or, or, or something, you know? And so the same thing, I, I, you know, I'm friends with people who got this, you know, mm -hmm. I don't agree with this, but I'm friends with them. And, and, that, and I want to maintain that because none of us really knows what's truly going on in this world. And so to isolate yourself away from anybody who's different from you is a, is a red flag and it's a concerning flag. And you're right, Catherine, a lot of times people have to like learn those lessons the hard way. I, I have for sure, you know, and so that you want to keep you want to keep yourself very balanced and grounded. And the, the final thing I'll say is if this is an enlightening episode to you because you realize you have been the flying monkey or maybe you have, as we're saying, people have to learn lessons the hard way. Don't be afraid to apologize. Don't be afraid just to be like, I fucked up, you know, and I would again suggest you watch all of our Scientology friends because they're really good at saying I fucked up and that they've yeah. learned a lot from them and the courage it takes for them to say, I messed up and I am sorry. And I'm going to try to course correct. And let's talk about this. So, you know, there's a, I actually, Catherine, people who can apologize, who can be like, I am so sorry. I really screwed up when people do, when I, people come to me and there's no, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, but, or I'm, yeah. just, it's just, a, I'm sorry. I really screwed up and I know you hate me. And I really, when people have the balls to do that, oh, you know, for them jumps way up absolutely way up. absolutely it's so so powerful it's powerful for us to think about where we need to go out and apologize to someone yeah. and you know we are human we're going to fall off the pedal stall for yeah. goodness sake let's let's let ourselves have a little bit of leeway you know even idris the wonder cat catches birds at times that's you know if someone as perfect as idris will still sometimes do naughty things and spray we on my bag um <laughs> so you know and lighten up a bit and have fun and let you but re just remember it starts with you and the only one that can go through this journey um and man up about it really is you so when you feel strong enough when the time is there just just take your power back we've had Absolutely. so many people talking about taking your power back and yet still doing this you can't take your power back unless you realize that this is a thing and where it's happening to you Absolutely. And I will invite you guys in the comment section if you want to leave your stories of spirit. If you want to, you don't have to. Uh, I know for some people, they're very private. But if you have a story to share that you want to share, kind of like the story I shared with the scars in the yoga yeah. world, just to help people kind of see different perspectives of where you know there's been spiritual manipulation, I invite you to share those stories um, just to help people uh, understand that they're not alone when it comes to this kind of coercion. And um, and yeah. All right, you guys. Well, we've got more exciting stuff coming. I hope we you guys have. have having a wonderful wonderful week with uh lots to think about right yeah lovely thank you so much i learned a lot from that so thank you for all that bryce and thank you for anyone who's joined us on this we really appreciate you absolutely we'll talk to you next week Catherine's channel guys so we'll talk to you guys next week over there on Catherine's channel bye everybody bye